probably be easier when you can just die. I'm Chewy Mew, and welcome to my channel, but more specifically, welcome to Venom Month, where Venom Month is just a whole month dedicated to reviewing uh, Venom figures. We're taking a look at a Venom character, and that figure is the Toy Biz Spider-Man Classics. I don't know what wave it is, because it's just called Spider-Man, and that is this wave, Spider-Man, and the figure we're looking at is Venom. Don't worry, I have the figure in real life, but this is what he looks like in the packaging. Mine has suffered a lot of paint wear, so it doesn't look identical to this, but this display base you get is pretty cool. You get like a little uh, piece of like a, se a section of concrete with some venom ooze going on it. Then you have like a brick wall here with like the venom tendrils wrapping around it. And uh, oof, I have like the lighting right there. Turn this on. And then you can see it has like a cool venom head. Like, looks like the symbiote is crawling onto the brick wall. I mean, this I feel like this would work better for like like a red suit Spider-Man, like the symbiote's coming to get him. Uh, Venom, it still looks really cool with him, but, you know, uh, that's, uh, you know, that that's, a, that, that's a cool base and stuff. Unfortunately, I don't have the whole base. I do have the platform, but here's the Venom figure. He's kind of tall, so I have to move the camera up. I think he's like seven inches tall, which that's pretty tall, um, especially in the earlier Toy Biz days, like the, earlier, the early 2000s, the early six-inch scale days of Toy Biz. When figures were not really big, they were slowly getting up in scale. Um, but either way, here he is on the base. Take a look at the base really quick. On the back of it, it says, 2002 Marvel Entertainment Made in China, Toy Biz Worldwide 2002. Uh, and it did have the uh, the clip part here, so you clip on the, the, brick, the brick wall in the back with the symbiote part. I did get this figure at a yard sale in like either 2002, 2003, or 2004. Around that time, I don't remember. I don't remember which one it was. I was too young to remember that, but I do remember getting it at a yard sale. It's a really cool symbiote slime. I like that the base is kind of this matte color, but the symbiote slime is much glossier matte. It's more like enamel, because no, there's like matte. Matte is like super not glossy at all, kind of like dirt. And then super glossy is you know like a like like really shiny, kind of like his chest right here. My first ever Spider-Man figure. And then enamel is like. Kind of in the middle of gloss and uh, kind of middle of, in, in the middle of matte and glossiness, like this back plastic that's gloss, but this front part is is uh, matte, and then this is enamel. That looks really cool. Also, looks like it has a little dent right here, like you could push a button. It doesn't have a button you could push. Um, yeah, I wish I had the whole base. I don't though, but this is cool enough. This was also when Toy Biz was still doing detailed bases, like you can see for the rest of the figures. Like, Sandman didn't have a base, he didn't have a base, he didn't have a base, he didn't have a base. I mean, this is McFarlane Spider-Man, they called him Super Poseable on the packaging. He did have, like, a base, it was more for, like, a gimmick, it wasn't, like, a display thing like Venom's. I always thought that this Venom thing came with slime that would, like, leak from the Venom's mouth, or the symbiote head. Maybe it does, I don't know, I've never seen it in stores, or I haven't really seen any reviews of it, so I'm not really too sure. Um, so this being, this was maybe my third or fourth... Uh, Spider-Man toy ever. I did probably have plush toys, but my first ever was uh, my first ever Spider-Man figure that I refer to him as. Um, and back in the day when I had these two, I also had Movie Green Goblin and Spider-Sense Spider-Man. Movie Green Goblin is a bit far away right now. He'd be hard to get to. Uh, and this guy doesn't stand. Uh, luckily, I did manage to get uh, the variant of him in a mystery box. The only variant part is everything else is identical. Just a uh, he has the swipping hands and he has the magnet hand. Mine is missing the fingers because just play wear. But yeah, I think this one is the better version just because he has magnets. This one still looks really good. And keep in mind, back when I got this Venom, my Spider-Man basically was in it was in this condition. Like maybe a little bit of paint scuffing here and there, but he was basically brand new. When I got Venom, I only owned him for maybe like two years, maybe two or three, depending on what year I got him. I got him in 2002. He was on my birthday cake. I got this guy in like. Like I said, 2, 3, or 4. Uh, 2002, 2003, 2004. Uh, but yeah, you can see how much bigger he is than like a regular 6-inch Spider-Man. So he's very tall Venom. Very cool looking. Uh, one thing I also like about this Venom is he is sort of like the middle phase of Venom's transformation from just looking like... Like Sinister Six Venom. Looks kind of more like the McFarlane kind of Venom. I'm going to move my camera back. It looks more like the McFarlane style, just... A really muscular dude with like a shark head and claws and then you move over a couple of years and then you have venom with like you know bigger claws still muscular body and then like similar shark head with like a crazy tongue and then fast forward to like early 2000s and even modern venom he's, he's a behemoth with like 
a very deformed human body, huge back, huge arms, a jaw that's not even angled like a human anymore. It's not like, like, you know, Venom with like, uh, the jaw goes horizontally, his goes vertically, like a very creepy, like borderline demonic kind of Venom style. So he's like the middle ground of like Venom slowly becoming more monstrous looking. And I like it for that reason. The one thing you may notice as well comparing these is that this Venom has a blue wash. So this was Toy Biz trying to do a, a wash on Venom, which I think it looks cool. Mine, I did, like, maybe when I was, like, 12 or something in, like, 2010 or around that kind of time. I had some black paint, and I thought, oh, I'm going to paint Venom because I don't like the blue, the blueness on it. And then as a couple years ago, I decided, hey, I actually like the blue, the blue parts on Venom. It gives it some wash and shading. So then I tried undoing it, but then we're kind of like halfway where some parts it came off, other parts it didn't. Like you can see like right here on his shin, it's very, I took the black paint off, but here there's parts on it. it look like on this arm here and then the back legs, there's a lot of blue that's now exposed on the back of his head. So there was a lot more blue on this. I did kind of ruin it uh, by painting it and then trying to take it off very badly. This Venom does have some blue wash here on his chest on the spider logos. This guy had wash basically everywhere, which I think it looks cool. Uh, trust me, it looked better when he had the, it was properly applied instead of looking all weird like this now. But let's take a look at the face here. Very cool looking face. Look at the eyes there. I did repaint the eyes because they were the black, the black from his original plastic being black. There was so much bleeding through that you could almost not see the white eye. Kind of like Spider-Man's, how there's like all this paint chipping from his eye. Venom was kind of the same thing, uh, because very heavily played with. His paint did, or his tongue did, like, all these veins popping out of his tongue. They had a mix of some, some lime greens, along with some burgundy and some black all mixed together here. Like, like, a kind of throw-up color a little bit. <laughs> uh, it looks cool, though. It, it, it was like a bunch of different colors here in his tongue. Kind of like, you know, how Eric, Lar Eric Larson drew Venom with, like, a sort of, like, green slime coming out of his mouth. It was kind of like a mix with that. Fortunately, the paint is all worn off to death. The teeth, you can see there is some slight greenness in between the yellows of his teeth. His teeth are yellow, like sort of pale yellow with green in there. It's been, the paint's been worn out, so you mostly just see the, like, the, the yellow part. You can see, like, right there on those tooth, there's some black paint bleeding through. On the head, you can see, uh, I tried taking off the, like I said, tried taking off my black paint. It worked, kind of. Um... You can see, also you can see the, like, the, the texture in the plastic. That it's not super smooth. It has, like, a slight, very, very slight rough texture on the head and the chest. The spider logo came out looking surprisingly clean. There are some parts where, uh, or it still looks clean after all these years of being played with. I did actually repaint the chest logo because there was a lot of black bleeding through. Like, right here on the stomach and then, like, in between his uh, pectorals, there was some paint also coming off. So you can see where some of the white paint is. Like, uh, like th on the right here on the chest, there's no white web lines anymore right here. Like, right there, the little corner tip of the spider, like you can see on this side, the paint is completely gone as well. The paint lo the paint apps were incredibly clean and crispy. Unfortunately, just playing with it, some paint is kind of kind of peeling off. A little bit of a uh, paint QC issue right there on that part. But overall, all of it looks really cool. Um... Uh, one thing I did notice is uh, his wrist right here. This had no blue wash on it at all. It just had the this part. I did repaint the black dot because the black... Or no. I repainted the white. And then the I put the black dot again. That's why it's not symmetrical. You can see the black dot is not in the dead center. On um, You can see how I someone... Like I did it myself because you can see the two hands here. The dots are different sizes. This one's smaller. Like you can see this was not done professionally. This was done by me as like... I don't know, 16 year old when I thought, oh man, I don't like the, that I took the blue wash. I'm going to do it again. But overall, the paint apps are pretty clean. I mean, the, the paint apps are definitely a lot cleaner when it was brand new. I didn't get it new. Like I said, I got it at a yard sale. Uh, probably whoever when they, whoever took this out of the package and had it mint on card when they got it, the paint obviously looked a lot better than now being worn out and played with for like, having this figure for like over 20 years probably, um, which is pretty cool. The head sculpt looks really nice on it. He has all these wrinkles here, like on the forehead and stuff. Um, you can see like the gap kind of sticking out there. One thing that did happen playing with this, eventually the glue holding his tongue got worn out and it came off. And now, uh, if you look at the mouth right there, 
you can see there's a big hole in it, but if you look at him from a distance, like he's over here, uh, the gap in his mouth does not look, it doesn't look weird, but if you put it up close like this, he looks like he's missing something there, but from a distance, he just looks like he has like a big open mouth. Um, plug this in the right way. Also, his neck, since I did the original review, his neck did break, so I did uh, customize it. Uh, I could probably do a lot better now, but basically uh, it allows his head to rotate still, so that's good. Um, he has all these muscles here on his legs and thighs, or on his, same thing, legs and thighs. On his legs here, you can see a bunch of tendons that look not quite human compared to, like, his torso and his upper arm and even his boot. Um, the reason for that is Toy Biz actually reused elements or parts of this body. Mainly, the only reused parts is his shoulders, his thighs, and the pelvis. Everything else is new. That figure reuses the body of these Toy Biz Planet of the Symbiotes Lasher. I don't know why I said that so weird. Uh, but yeah, Lasher also has a, quite a bit of a wild paint app. And they, uh, the tentacles come off. It's been played, so they come off a bit. Um, you can see they do look similar. Like, the body, like, the shape of their body is similar. Obviously, head sculpt and paint app is different. One of the most obvious differences, other than the head, is uh, that his, his uh, everything below his thigh, starting at the knee, the knees are differently sculpted. You can uh, see the pin on this leg for, like, the, the hinge is actually thicker than this one. The pins themselves are different. These are just transparent white pins whereas these are black and they're actually these look like you're more like the more modern kind of pins that toy Biz used and hasbro did um or hasbro kind of stopped doing it they're using pinless now a little bit but the ankles everything below his shin is different as well looking a bit more human instead of symbiote-ish another thing the torso is new because if you look at it right here where you see the black part outlines the the greenish bluish it's actually sculpted on Venom does not have that same sculpting on the side, so that means the torso is new, and also this one has holes on the back for his tentacles, and screws. This was back when Toy Biz... I guess Toy Biz couldn't make pinless torsos, I guess, maybe? So uh, they, they use that instead. Um, this also does have sculpting. So the pelvis is also new. Like, the pelvis has, like, the sculpting here. Like, you can see it's part of where the black outline is, it's raised. Kind of makes me think a little bit like the NECA Ninja Turtles, how they have, like, the black outline on them. They have the black outline, like, in the, the, the grooves and stuff like that. So, basically, all that is reused is, like, the similar body structure. All that, I'm pretty sure, is reused from this is uh, is his thighs. And uh, that's it. Maybe the upper arm. So, basically, all that's reused is his thighs and his upper arm. Everything else is brand new. Most notably, the head and the feet. And this one doesn't have pin, pins on it. This is from 1996. This is from, uh, I think, 2002. 2002. Yeah, right there. Oops. Throwing these guys everywhere. And these tentacles, you can't put them on the back anywhere. Which, he doesn't use those. But yeah, so this figure is... I mean, I always complain about Hasbro for reusing bodies. Uh, basically, the only thing reused is, like, the aesthetic, I guess. Like, you know, similar pose like this. Spread legs. Limited posability. But the only real reused stuff is, like, the thighs and then the upper shoulder. That's basically all that's reused. Everything else is brand new sculpt with some new posability. The only new posability he has is, like, these finger joints, which I think it would have been just as helpful having, like, a wrist hinge. These aren't too useful. There was a point when I did super glue this finger to the hand so he could make a fist. But I took it off because I wanted the figure to look more authentic. Also, he does have a... Uh, uh, like an ankle pivot that doesn't work really at all. We just have like ankle hinge and toe joints. So, you know, at least he has some extra posability that you can get him. Not really pose much better, but you can. It's better than just, you know, knee joint and thigh swivel. But let's take a look at the posability, which I kind of just did. You know, the toe goes up, it goes down. You have a hinge in the ankle, a single bend in the knee, which it goes past 90 degrees. 90 degrees, if you get his leg lined up, is like about right there. And he can do that, like, ever so slightly past 90 degrees. Same thing with the arms. Or no, the arms have a single joint in the elbow and finger hinges, which is kind of useless. They don't really change the pose. He has a waist swivel here. The arms rotate all the way around. They go all the way up. And then his head rotates side to side. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty cool there. I think the posability on this guy, it is low. But also, it's okay because at the time when Tobas was making these figures, they were prioritizing... Super articulated figures. Like, this guy is also a reuse of Spider-Man Classics Series 1 Spider-Man figure. I don't know where mine is right now. 
but he is a reuse, basically just a new torso, new arms. I mean, a lot of body parts are new, but the, the same like aesthetic of the body is the same, just kind of different here and there to make it not look identical. But Tobis was prioritizing on just re-releasing that body with slight modifications while they were working on, you know, cranking out villains like this and making McFarlane Spider-Man. Who Spider-Man Classic started in 2001, and by 2004, you already had Toybiz doing a butterfly joints, ankle pivot, individual finger joints, disc hinge necks. They were already figuring a lot of stuff out, and in the meantime, they were just re-releasing the same body mold modifications, so they were like, okay, we're going to keep the market saturated with brand new figures, albeit kind of the same sculpt, but we're going to be working on making other stuff, you know, like Carnage and Lizard and Scorpion. Scorpion, that's still the best Scorpion figure, you know, ever. But yeah, as far as that goes, I really like this figure, not only for the emotional attachment, but also just because it's more simplistic tongue venom instead of like being the full crazy, insane monster looking venom. It just looks like a really muscular guy with claws and then like a shark head with a tongue. I know sharks don't have their tongue sticking out, but you kind of know what I mean. But anyway, that's over this video. Let me think about this figure and I'll see you guys in the next day of Venom Month. Wow.